just let me see. Okay, so so first I'll start with a one-dimensional tutorial available on the panel link. Exactly. That, that so if you don't mind sharing the screen, we can walk uh, through. You have I have to give you the rights, right? Or give me a second. So how can I do that? Mm. Aren't you? Don't you see the share screen button on the bottom? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it. Okay. Now you you have to give me the the host has to say where it's participant screen sharing. So there there must be some option to. So yeah, I I'm here in the options with your user and I can see make host allow to record rename, putting waiting room remove report. But it seems like, oh wait a second share screen. Advanced sharing options. Uh, all participants. Ah, that's stupid. They, they put it there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You should have it now. Okay. All right. So, uh, is it mm -hmm. Okay. So, this is just a function fitting for quantum neural networks. So, basically, at if you see here, right here, this yeah. is a function f of x, and it depends on x, and there's some random plot points, and just we want to find a good, nice smooth curve that goes through it. Yeah. So let's just walk through the code step by step. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you wanted to use neural, uh, on the continuous variable neural networks, first of all, we have to use the strawberry field simulator. So the all other don't work here. Mm -hmm. And so you just import the necessary libraries. You import strawberry field simulator and then right here definitely we define the layer mm -hmm. so we are just using one wire uh, wait a minute i just click something i guess yeah it's yeah, just so, one wire mm -hmm. yeah we just we have just one wire so we see the code for that is pretty fairly simple so it's just a rotation gate followed by a squeezing gate then a rotation gate and a displacement gate and a non-linear activation function. yeah mm -hmm. just right here uh, like it's fairly obvious. Like this is a sim like a artificial neural network in class. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you go ahead. Then then you start uh, develop. And yeah, so you here you have the quantum neural network. So so you encode the input and then you you apply the layer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So using displacement gate, uh, you encode the inputs, and then this this whole thing is like just finding out the cost function. So the cost function is like, uh, I think, I think the square square of the difference and mm -hmm. divided by the length. So that that that's all going on right here. And here we load the data set. So mm -hmm. we have the x, the y value, the single dimensional array, as you see, uh, we plot it. So mm -hmm. that's pretty simple. And then we uh, find then we parameterize the circuit. So these are the random parameters. So yeah. number of layers. I think they're chosen to be four, uh, and then 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 a simple just uh, we take the atom optimizer mm -hmm. and run it to a circuit. Yeah, and, and then it and just as goes you can see the cost goes down. But the yeah. funny thing about this is like it takes it takes a really long time. Mm -hmm. So you just like in the TensorFlow if you, if you worked on it, so it takes about maybe one one minute to do uh, five hundred iterations. Okay. I think it ta it takes about one hour to do these many iterations. Oh. Okay. Uh, also, it, then the time scales up in, when we increase the number of parameters. So mm. that that's that's just a flaw it has. Uh, next thing we just we just we we take the testing dataset and just we predict the outcomes. And as you can see, it's a smooth function going yeah. through the data set. Mm -hmm. So that's that's basically it uh, for the unidimensional. Uh, analysis and uh, what I wanted to do was generalize this so if we if we take let's say uh, okay so let's let's take this data set so this is a very famous Boston housing data set mm -hmm. so you have three parameters and we have the output yeah, parameter that is the cost of the house I guess so mm -hmm. I want to use these three parameters to predict this one so that's fairly easy for tensorflow linear regression any other thing but I just couldn't find any material on on how to do it so i had to do it myself 
So, uh, but so, but let, just to clarify, make sure I understand. So, and then what you wanted to do is you want to generalize um, these uh, the one the, the tutorial to kind of uh, accept at least uh, these type of input, right? Like so, three inputs and then one output. And um, and and what did you try that it didn't work? That you had to do it manually. Uh, that that will be clear when I show the code. Uh, okay. So this is okay. This is the Q and N versus TensorFlow. So uh, yeah, I, that's that's what you shared before. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so as you can see, the initial part is fairly the same. I just loaded the yeah, dataset. Load. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the three the three feature vectors right here. X screening yeah. data, I spread the dataset, and then I. I, I actually I texted one of the people in Xanadu and they suggested me using templates. Templates available on the website. So okay. this is a C neural network template. So what we can do here is like it can make a whole like architecture and you just have to specify the number of layers you want and okay. the number of wires you will be using. So this right here is that and uh, then, then again, then we just uh, the encoding of the inputs as a displacement gate. So mm -hmm. we just so do it for three three wires. Three wires. Yeah. And go, and next later that just making the cost function pretty much the same. Just a few changes in the code for okay. the cost function. Oh, okay, so you're taking the uh, the predictions and then what you're doing. Can you how does how, how does the square loss function look like in the in the is it it just accepts one prediction instead of a, an array or uh, it, it 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 accepts an array so like all the y y values but no okay. no so since since it will be run through a for loop so it it, it yeah yeah okay one it, step it, it, yeah okay so it goes through it goes through all the predictions yeah. so uh, this is the cost function right here then you uh, initialize all the parameters and then Again, the same thing. You take the atom optimization, run the circuit, and for some reason, I was encountering this error uh, every time I did this. No matter how I did this, wrong so shape of wrong. the input. Yeah. So the thing is, like, uh, I don't, I don't so quite, I, I don't quite understand the, this, uh, this template thing. Can you explain me a bit more about this? The CV, like, what's that? Like the, you said that they told you uh, to use the CV something. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, Yeah. So, so what does this see, this, do? This, this is basically it automatizes the process of making the whole neural network by yourself. So what you can, uh, as you see, this, this, this is the function they have provided in this yeah. directory. So you just import it and you specify the parameters that, that, uh, will be there. So as you can see from theta one, to theta four and all, all yeah. the parameters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm specify right here and what it does is like it automatically creates a network for you so, so and in the, in the in, yeah in the tutorial this is the uh, this is the function where they just uh, they just put the actual gates uh, on the on the yeah, wire yeah right? exactly since since it was just a one 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 wire circuit so it, it wasn't that hard but you know if, yeah. if there's a three wire circuit then you know you have beam splitters then you have three Three squeezing gates, three displacement gates, three nonlinear gates. But have so, you tried? But that's not. That's not. I mean, have you tried just copy pasting the? So I mean, you if you if you would kind of use the same pattern they use for one wire, right? And then you just add uh, beam splitters for the entanglement. Uh, yeah, or, I mean, I, I, mean I, I, I was trying. I I did try that, but that that's like too much work manually. Well, maybe maybe we can do it uh, easy. In, in a couple of. Yeah, yeah, is it because okay, yeah, I mean, but uh, so here I see in, in a diagram with four wires, um, but I guess you can parameterize that, right? Like you can give it as an input wires is the last argument of the function. Yeah, three. Sure. You just um, you just provide the argument and then yeah, and, and, that, and it does it. Function for automatizing the parameters, like you just it automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see right here. Yeah, that in it, the CV QNN layers all you just specify the number of layers you have and the number of wires you have, then it automatically gives you random parameters for all the functions. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's 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 pretty good as well. So yeah, it, it, it's a helpful tool, but I I think just I'm, I'm just having some trouble implementing on the code. 
uh, maybe we can optimize it later so uh, so what i did do like you were suggesting me was maybe maybe do this manually so mm-hmm. at the end what it is it's a variation of quantum circuit it has parameters in the parameters get updated and the weights and the output changes mm-hmm. so the easier way to do it would be just to wait a minute um, no just just go to the tutorial uh which tutorial the the penny lane tutorial yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went through that already but that's just that's for one dimensional analysis only so I'll, i'm showing you how to do it for the multi dimensional case yeah, but can you show it just quickly um, <clears throat> the, the the function that creates the the function that creates the circuit? Uh, here it is. So that's so what creates the squeezing gate rotation and displacement. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and so have you tried just the stupid just to see if you like my, my point is you know just to try to pinpoint where the error from the 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 weight the 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 weights vector uh, error you're getting whether this is caused by something that's somehow off in the template like could you i know it's not the right way to build the layer but could you just copy paste Mm -hmm. these you know what i mean and copy paste these and just um, have it like for three wires even without any beam splitters or anything just like you know make something that does not really it's not an optional you know what i mean just try try to find where the the error of the the source of the error is first so that's exactly what I did here. Uh, that's what I was showing you. So you, as you can see uh, right here. Okay. okay. So you did rotation. Yeah. Okay. So you did everything. I yeah, see. Oh, okay. Cool. And that still doesn't and, work. No, no, no. That works. That works. But uh, so that that's doesn't give exactly you. The, Okay, but that doesn't yeah, give you the error. Okay, so that doesn't give you the error uh, when you uh, run this with the atom optimizer. But it's not it's not working like it's the 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 layer is not working properly. It's not working the way. Uh, or it's not it's not doing. Yeah, that's the result, right? Uh, no, I, I think there's some mistake. Uh, wait a minute. So, yeah. So yeah, that that's that's the actually code. Okay, so that's actually the same code as you can see right here. So there are three layers. Uh, there are three wires and yeah, three one wires. Layer, mm-hmm. One one layer only, and you have the displacement. You have the cost function right here, and I just I I took a gradient descent optimizer. Okay. So I think that Adam was getting stuck uh, in some barren plateaus. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, this is the regression right here. So, so the, the, orange, the yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So the orange line is the uh, the testing testing data, and mm-hmm. uh, the blue line is actually the prediction data. Mm-hmm. So I think they have, they they fairly overlap. It's not that it's not that bad to be honest. I mean, have yeah. you what's the, what's the co- what's the cost of the of of the solution? So the cost at the end was zero point zero one seven eight. Okay. So as as I said, like the, like it, it's very slow. That uh, for the twenty iterations, it it must have been around like five minutes. That yeah, yeah, but it, yeah, yeah. Okay, but I mean, like I'm trying to you know what I'm because I feel like you're 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 putting a lot of problems on the table at the same time and trying to just like. Um, kind of understand what's your so so you got it to work this way now the the layer it's not optimal right because you don't have entangling gates yeah i don't have the beam splitter uh, exactly and there's no quantum advantage technically uh, Exa- exa- maybe, exactly maybe, 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 maybe. so this is this is the tensorflow a simple artificial network as okay. you can see the this is this is better than the previous one what's the cost right of here? this uh, the cost is, as you can see, wait a minute. Yeah. So the loss is zero point zero zero seven two. Okay. Right yes, yeah, so it's one. It's yeah. So this is definitely way better. Um, uh, but here you've here you're using another optimizer. You're using the atom I saw for the TensorFlow. I can use it SGD as well. It it uh, okay. won't give me a, maybe 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 large large number of epochs, but uh, yeah, yeah, no. But I mean, just just to make sure, like if you uh, you want to make sure you want. I don't know if you want if what you're trying to do is compare these things or. Um, okay, but uh, so what's the? Have you tried adding beam splitters or or playing with the layer to see if that improves? That 
that was our, what was i about to do so it, it that's the part that is left maybe we can do it right now so yeah sure um so i'm, I'm i haven't added green setup before so maybe it, do, do so, you add the whole integrometer or uh i mean i haven't really played with uh, sanadu myself a lot so the thing is let me take a take a look at the so um can you open the documentation and just check for beam splitter? I mean, actually, can you open the what, what's the in the in the template that that you were using before? Because there you had like a sketch of what it was doing. Sure. Um, yeah. Because the okay, so the S is squeezing gates, the D is displacements displacements gates. So the the D and the K at the end, those are like uh, it's the bias and the nonlinear. Um, now the two big boxes. K, K is the linear. K that, is the nonlinear. K is exactly. K is nonlinear. Is the care gate, and the displacement here is the bias, and uh, and so the the squeezing gate. It's it's in the middle of the, it's sandwiched by these two black boxes, which are what? What are the what are these Interferom big, interferometers? Okay. Um, yeah, so, as, so, uh, it, like it's written right here, the layer acts on M mode of given wires, so it uh -huh. includes the interferometers of uh, so in case we have m is equals to three so three there's three beam splitters ah, okay so, so it's, yeah so it's probably i mean this is probably like if you have three wires you're probably going to have uh you, what you want to do is you want to have three beams okay hmm. so three. This formula, the k m into m minus one by two so that gives us three beam splitters yeah, uh, exactly. So you you would do one between the you know first and and second wire, second and third wire, and then yeah, and then exactly. and, and, yeah, that that was the error uh, that was uh, I was having. Like uh, mm -hmm. where where do you exactly put it? So it, it is easy to put it uh, in the case of even number of wires. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's very visible. So you could, like let's say there are four wires. You have one beam splitter right here, one right here. One right here and one well, right it's here. not. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not that trivial. Yeah, because it, it's. I mean, you. Hmm. I don't know if that is the best. The best way, right? I mean, you're missing. If you have this configuration, you're missing an entanglement between the the. Say, if you have like between QB, between mode two and and mode one and mode two, if you start from mode zero. Um, so, like like a template for CV neural networks, they also have a template for. Uh, interferometers. So here, here it is, right here. As you can see. Okay. Uh huh. So you have the okay. So you have different meshes. I see. Okay, different ideas. Yeah. So uh, maybe should we use this? I mean, uh, you can just first before using any of these, you can just first try by hand. I mean, just you know. Uh, okay. Just, just try to apply like the the you know a beam splitter gate. I mean, you have three three nodes. The 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 easiest thing to do is you know you do from mode zero to between mode zero and one, then between mode one and two, and another one between mode zero and two. You know, so you kind of ca capture all the possible pairs uh, with three interferometers, uh, and then you have six. I know it's more than what the template. Uh, is is uh, is saying, but uh, at least it covers. Okay, so uh, I need to check what's the syntax of putting a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beam splitter gate must be in the strawberry field, right? Not in the pen. Sorry. The beam splitter gate must be in the strawberry fields. Uh, uh, this this I then I I have to I have to check as well. So beam splitter. Strawberry fields. Um, strawberry fields gates uh, beam splitter. So it's the BS gate, the bullshit gate. <laughs> um, so give me a second, Sarah. The beam splitter gate. So I, it's um, it's in strawberry fields. Let's see if I can share. Have you found it or? Yeah, I, I found it, but the uh, thing is like, it also, uh, uh, interferometer is a combination of beam splitters and phase shifters. Okay, but I mean, so, but, but give it, I mean, I don't know. Uh, just give it a try yeah. first. Uh, 
I mean, I have no idea, right? Like I, as I say, I'm not really an expert in, in quantum machine learning, but I guess you can try different things and then compare them. So, I mean, the beam splitter, okay. defi the beam splitter kind of defines or creates entanglement already. So. Okay. Uh... Yeah, that's what I, that's what I got as well. But what do we specify the, key, the the modes? So you you look into the gates. I'll I'll look into one or any tutorial they might have regarding this. Maybe mm -hmm. that would help. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I found is beam splitter. Exactly. Uh, another question is that is it even allowed like uh, like we, this is this is all from the QML library and we'll have to put a gate from SF library right here. I'm not I, I'm not all confident. I have uh, I have no idea. So if you what have you imported as QML library? The it's a strawberry fields. It's penny lane. Okay, yeah. SQML. There should be something in the in the penny lane, no? Beam splitter. So here, because I'm actually, I ended up, I ended up in the code of the template, I don't know why, where they have the interferometer. No, no, that, that that's, be, uh, uh, that's too deep. Yeah, I don't know, but I just want to take a look at how to use the beam splitter. So they use a beam splitter class. No class, like it's a function. What is that? Have you found any example or no? Yeah, I, I, like I'm into the example of a template for using in an interferometer. So okay. right here on the screen. So it just, they just imported the template interferometer and they imported all the parameters that we have to initialize in the beginning. Okay. And then then they go ahead and then make a circuit and then just in, 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 they write the interferometer and then they just put all the parameters right here. Okay, I mean, you can try this way, but it's like always, uh, yeah, I mean, you can try this way, see if it breaks. I mean, if the, if the template stuff, if the other template stuff was breaking, like that's why I wanted to get as low level as possible in terms of just using the beam splitter gate, the beam splitter gate. 
So there's a class in, in, in Penny Lane, there's a class called Beam Splitter. I'll share the, the link with you in a second. Where is the chat here? Chat. So there's a class that has uh, the you initialize with three parameters, the theta, the phi, and then the wires. Okay. Oh, you know, I like you know, just just to use the 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 lowest level possible stuff. Um, okay. Okay. See if that works. Yeah, that, that, it, it makes sense, I guess. Um, just not to rely on generated, like on, on, on kind of generated layers first, because it's uh, it's like if that other one was giving an error, I mean, you don't know really what's going on there. And these libraries are so uh, funky still that like, you know, it's probably good good stuff, but it's, uh, I mean, if you're not really deep into this, it's uh, easy to, So what would be the syntax? I, can I write like QML dot beam splitter and just a theta and pi and wires? Yeah, try because it, that's how you're also using the other ones, right? QML dot displacement and then you have like the stuff. It's the same syntax, it seems to be. So, okay. Maybe, so yeah. just for example, QML dot beam splitter and then you need the, uh, you need two, two parameters, right? Like the set and the phi. And then you see the top, and then the last, and the third parameter is the wires. So they, they can, uh, they can be two wires at max, right? Yeah, yeah, two wires at max. So you need, so you need to have, so go back to the code, you need to do two things. So you need to have before, what I would do is, um, no, no, so what I would sure. do is uh, before, so you have a rotation a squeezing a, and another rotation, right? So, um, what I would do is I would put the beam splitters. I mean, you can try, no, no, I think it's, I think it's good if you leave them. I mean, here you can try different things, right? Like you can do a sandwich with beam splitters or you can do, maybe we should first start with just one thing and I would do it after the rotation. So just because intuitively the way that I've seen uh, other QML stuff being done is like you first do rotations, right? Um, <laughs> you apply like phase changes and then you do the entangling gates. Because if you apply first the entangling gates, it might not, cause you start with the, uh, you know, you start with a, uh, with a zero state or something like that it might not work as well as expected. So okay. should I write uh, why, why, why yours and this should be exactly, yeah, I think so. Okay. So let's, let's and, and, and now wait a second no wait a second <laughs> and now uh, and now copy that line two two more times okay right right here no actually you know i think uh maybe let's uh, just see like even if it's a correct syntax or not or maybe like it okay okay right. yeah, yeah okay okay because what i i realized that it should not go here it should go at the very end of the layer and you should have three beams, three beam splitters between wire zero one, wires one two, and then wire zero and two. So you kind of cover the all possible interactions between the three modes. Um, but that should be at, that should be at the end uh, of all the rotation sandwiches, so to say. But you can try like you can try like that if you want. See if that uh, at least runs. Yeah, your, your approach approach seems right. But uh, let me just check if the syntax is fine or not. Or... Yeah, exactly. Just give it a try and see if it breaks. <laughs> I've got like five, like 10 more minutes. I'm sorry. I, I really, uh, I really, I want a tight schedule. Um, no, no, I, I understand. Uh, okay, so you, you need a few more parameters. Uh, exactly, any more parameters, yeah. Yeah, it's error. must specify the wires that beam splitter acts on. So I guess I have to write wires here. Yeah, wires and then equals, yeah. Hmm. So it, it's working, right? I mean, it didn't break so far. <laughs> okay, still thinking. Yeah, I think it, it will work. Yeah, that that's what I was saying. Like it's it's really slow. I don't know. Uh, my my computer seems nice. It's it's a gaming laptop, but 
Yeah, maybe, I, maybe, maybe the programs, like I haven't, I haven't, play, I haven't played enough uh, with these things to kind of give you a sense of whether it's normal that it takes so much or not. But I, I guess the next thing you should. So if that doesn't break, the next thing to try is, a, as I said, like if you, um, if you go back here, so uh, remove the, just remove these, and then um, let's uh, I, let's do the following. So you should, because I don't know in what order these things are being inserted, but I would say you've you should probably organize the layer. You first do all the rotation and squeezing rotation. So this RSR okay. for all the wires. Okay. We're that done already? No, no, you're only done. So in the first three lines of your of, of the function, just do this for wire zero, right? Do right after yeah. that, uh, then right below these, just copy the same the same three lines of code two more times to cover wires one and two. So you will remove them later or you have them here already, yeah. So copy those over. No, but I, I think what you're missing out is like we have we have to put this, these are the linear transformations. This is the bias and this is the nonlinearity. Yeah, so oh, we might. Let's see if I. Uh, By the way, that it's working right here. Yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to think about a way to uh, a way to uh, show this to you in terms of what I meant, what I mean. So. You know, the the thing is you have, so if you take a look at the, if, if you imagine the circuit, right, like, and you go column by column, you see you see that the, f the first thing they do is an interferometer. So we, let's ignore this first one for a second, right? Let's imagine your orange boxes are, are your combinations of rotation, squeezing, rotation, right? Um, and now I'm realizing these interferometers, because they probably contain the phase shifting we talked about, that's why you don't see the rotation gates in here. So, yeah. so the orange boxes are rotation, squeezing rotation. So you should, in your code, you should first execute, uh, you should first create those blocks for all the wires, okay. right? Okay. Then, then you create the interferometer uh, combinations then you apply the uh, apply the displacements and then the non the 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 the, the k gates because in your code you're going wire by wire all the way to the to the end of the circuit well, you have to do these first one column all the wires then another column all the wires you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i think that that's what i have done in the code like lie right here so yes you can see like uh, we have all the wires zero yeah uh, no but but look but look but look exactly that's what i'm saying look sorry oh, okay. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, you you should transpose the code if you if you know what i mean you know oh, uh, i i am so I'm, uh, I'm going like for all the wires you're, you're going all like the, this you're going one wire at a time until the end and what you should do is one column at a time all the wires uh just to make sure that um because that, because you want the beam splitters to be because they connect the modes you want them to be right before the bias and 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 the uh, nonlinear uh, operations. I think I understand what you mean right mm. now. Uh, first, I I just gotta have all of them right. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. Exactly, and now you apply oh. now and now the and now you have to apply, apply the beam splitter. Um, yeah, right after the the so the next thing you have to apply before the biases and the and the other stuff is the beam splitter. We had a we had a beam splitter right here. We 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 had yeah we had it but you removed it but it's uh, it's fine it's Q, QML it's QML dot beam splitter, and then you have the uh, two parameters. I think they were 16 and seven, no, uh, 15 and 16. Yeah. And then you have wires zero one. And now copy that for wires one, two and wires zero two. Of course, they'll have each different parameters, right? So you have to do 17, 18 and 19, 20, I guess. So after, the, the, is, the, is the position correct? Yeah, I mean, that, I think this doesn't really, I mean, yeah, definitely, it actually definitely matters, but like that would be the configuration that I would try with. So you're, yeah, exactly. And now you, and now you add all the biases and all the displacements, yeah.
But I'd be curious why the template didn't work. That's something that you could uh, ex experiment no, with. No, I, I, I think I, I, I did put it on the Xanadu forums. Maybe maybe somebody will respond. Oh, but, okay. uh, because that's, that's I, I, it's definitely it, it, saving it you all the work. Uh, I mean, it, it, saves, yeah, yeah. It, it saves the work of, um, the thing, I mean, the thing is, it makes it easy because I guess, I guess the next stuff you should, you know, do is experiment with different structures of the layer, right? And so if you have to reconstruct the layer every time by hand, yeah, that's probably a mess. But then if you have all the templates, you can probably iterate over all the templates and try different templates really quickly, right? So you can then um, evaluate which, which, which layer structure is the best for your problem. Um, sure. Yeah. So, so I, do we need to add more beam filters, like in the beginning, or is it? So enough? no, I think again. I mean, uh, I just yeah. We can you can do another. You can copy and do, uh, the, these three beam splitters and put them in the in the beginning. That seems to be what they're doing. Um, although I'm not so sure if that's the structure of an interferometer. You know what I mean? Because the interferometer seems to combine beam splitting and rotation. Um, sure. So you probably you can try these and then you can try with interferometers. Uh, I, I think let, let, let's just go ahead with that. Like, well, you can go, ahead, just, can go ahead with these. Give it, give it a run, and then we, uh, and then I'll just have to go. But we can then you can tell me uh, whether you okay. whether this worked out or you achieved uh, what you wanted. Yeah, it takes quite a while. It's quite crazy. Yeah, exactly. And it's not a lot of data, right? Uh, yeah, five, just 500 data, data sets. So. It's just a 500? Okay. So what, like, like the actual data set I'm working on is the COVID-19 stuff. Ah, so okay. I, I, I can use that here. So let, let that, that's reserved for my research paper. But, okay. uh, mm, cool. so I use the Boston Housing data set. Essentially the same thing. Mm, yeah, it's a different data set. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, Let's see. So, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> so you're so you're hoping to see first whether it starts running. Yeah, it it is running because uh, it's taking a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that signature move of mm. But before you before there was some warnings, by the way. Now they are not here. I think they were saying something about it having a disconnected component in the circuit, but now they are probably not disconnected anymore because you have beam splitters. I don't know if that's what it what they what it meant. Oh, that's that, that's probably it. Uh, I think we should. Oh, uh, what what I'll try to do next time is like maybe implement this again on TensorFlow Quantum. Okay. So maybe that uh, since the the Google people must have made something better, right? Uh, <laughs> any 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 possible change? Yeah. Oh, it worked. Yeah. Oh, cool. perfect. Yeah, you see, you see the time it takes, it's taking like, if you just keep on increasing the number of parameters and the time. Yeah, increasing. of course, you increase the parameters and then, uh, and then with entanglement is, you know, this, this much more, uh, it's, it's a bigger space, right? You're, you're exploring. So, uh, so I think it works. So I, I, what, what yeah. I try to do is like, like, I just try to work on the template thing, like maybe get it right. Exactly. Uh, see, see if you see if you can get the templating to work because that will then put you in the right place. Because then you can try the different templating options. You can try different um, interferometer setups. Like you know, the they were they, they had different meshes, right? So you have different ways that you can set up interferometers, and then you can simply you know you could eventually what you could do is you can kind of prepare then the different options, let them run in parallel, and then see which uh, which uh, layer structure works the best. Uh, for a small problem, uh, and then and then you have it, and then you can run this on the on on, on a bigger data set. But then you're going to have to wait a couple of days, probably. <laughs> with this yeah, too. That, that's, that's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just, just cool. waiting for the next iteration, and then I think then we'll uh, it then it's over. I guess. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you see, it came out, and it, and it's a, it's a big step. It's a big step. It's a big step. There's definitely okay, from from so. point six to point almost five point four. Yeah. Thanks, Lord Daniel. So yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, it's uh, you know, it's uh, and that's why I, I kind of like, and that's uh, that was where my intuition was going. I, 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 it had to be. It's like I always prefer to start, you know, work with the lowest level first stuff before using any templates because this is still really. What's the version of the library? It's like zero point something, right? It's really, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying those things don't work. Um, 
but definitely no but, 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 but got, got a gift to use and also I, i just have to tell you like how the first time i saw your video like uh, so i had to read this quantum uh, cv q and n paper the, like the whole paper they have written on yeah. on how how the structure works so it was a big paper and like like i was just being lazy and the hardest thing in research is to read a research paper yeah and you i i just just put it on youtube and there was a video like you doing what i'm supposed to do uh, like i'm <laughs> okay. so, i was so happy that it existed uh, so yeah so that yeah. thanks a lot for that yeah cool i mean i have to i'll i'll go back to cv quantum computing at some point uh it's just this so what, what did you mean? I mean I'm doing right now I'm really diving into variational stuff but uh, just uh but like the uh non non continuous variable so the the the, the traditional uh, gate model um it's yeah I I I don't know there's just too much uh there's too much things to too many things to explore you know it's uh and I I I don't have like I'd love to have you know uh twice as much time as I dedicate to this and I'm hoping to because it's really a side project for me because it's uh, you know it's it's a side thing since so not my full time job and then uh yeah but in in the next months you know uh I might be able to schedule some extra time and then put some more effort in doing cv stuff which i definitely want to come back to and then yeah i i definitely see the quantum machine learning stuff to be something that i want to explore deeper uh with a you know a longer series or something like this soon um there's definitely yeah, something there drop me a text whenever you're doing it would love to have a re- like a bit better problem to work on like yeah, I'm, I mean, i'm actually working on this this uh like this is this is also a side hobby for me but like academic wise yeah so academically i'm i'm i'm, I'm a physicist so i'm pro- focusing more on the physics stuff but uh machine learning is like my side trick <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <that> <laughs> nice I mean I I very much enjoyed the the call by the way I I think that it's helpful I think it can be helpful for other people as well so I'm happy that it's being recorded because I might if you if you don't mind I might up- upload that it's kind of like I feel I got I got recently a lot of feedback that people like some of my videos where it feels a bit like um pair programming or you know kind of a uh, you're working together on a problem and sometimes it just helps to talk through to someone else you know um yeah. not just to yourself in your head because then you're kind of sometimes just tired of listening to yourself <laughs> and i i i wonder i wonder whether this is something that i could turn into some kind of like a monthly thing or a weekly thing where uh you know i would you know um, have a uh a pair programming session with someone uh kind of like you know uh, a different person every week or every month or something like that i don't know could be could be uh, that that's a very noble idea and i think it it, it would work like it says with the advent of uh quantum quantum programming uh yeah. and, and pro- especially like the new new language is coming out every day by the way i i, I got to ask what what's your favorite language um at so far really none because i mean with the exception of silk everything else is just it's just circuit building libraries it's not they're not real languages and uh okay. and i mean you know you have all these libraries even penny lane and stuff which they have a lot of utilities built on top of that for machine learning stuff you know calculating gradients and all this kind of stuff and that's good and those are u- useful but i'm looking for i'm kind of looking for you know uh, really forward to seeing like an actual quantum computing language popping up like silk silk is a bit more going this way right so yeah so by by just having the concept of variables you know that that can uh it, it, they are, it abstracts away the concept of the circuit but it still doesn't feel like it's on the spot like it's not on the right spot sure yeah. so, so i think what, i think they're more they're more for the physics rather than for the coders the library uh, mm-hmm. the languages so by the way this is the result we have right here for all our hard work for the past one hour uh, sure. i think it works for for five steps <laughs> that that that's it just so much better performance uh yeah so yeah. Cool. Thanks for being. yeah cool then uh we stay in touch i mean if you if you get better results and what i i'd love to know i love you you to kind of give me an update once you get playing with templates because i think that can uh i'm curious just to see which template worked the best just give me keep, keep me in the loop okay sure. cool yeah then see you around yeah. see you see you have a good day Thank you, thank you.